I stay earthbound when prosperity awaits you in the stars? Come to Halcyon, the only colony on the edge of the frontier owned and operated by corporations. A trip of 10 short years will feel like mere minutes, thanks to the comfort and safety of your very own hibernation chamber. You'll wake up in a perfect society designed to maximize your productivity with guaranteed full employment. With only a minor term of service, you will become the master of your own destiny when you go out of this world to the Halcyon Colony. Hundreds of thousands of colonists will have to drift out here forever just to keep from damaging the board's bottom line. Disgraceful. I bet you're vicious with a toss ball stick. A crack shot. Capital. Yes, I should pick someone likely to survive a hail of gunfire. I hope we haven't lost that silver tongue to frostbite. Subtle and discreet. Exactly what I need. Look at that. A real scientist. A rabble-rouser. Perfect. The colony's full of rabble. You're so much more than your designated profession. Looks to be your lucky day, my friend. Please power down your engines. Africa. Not likely, bootlickers. <laughs> Initiate skip jump. There you are, wondering what's going on, eh? Bit of bad news there, I'm afraid. Your colony ship was inexplicably knocked out of skip space and forced to complete its journey at sublight speeds. This means that you and every other colonist on Hope have been in suspended animation for 70 years, give or take. 
normally. <laughs> Reviving someone after so long leads to some quite horrifying results. It's called explosive cell death, but it's really more of a liquefaction. Something wrong? Oh, yes, well, not to worry. I've pumped your body full of a special concoction I devised to keep you from dying so horrifically. Hopefully at all, but uh, I guess we'll see, yes? Unfortunately, I used the last of my chemical supplies saving you. I know it's a lot to ask, but I must have your help securing more if we're to save the rest of your fellow colonists. I'd see it done myself, of course, but the board has a sizable bounty on my head. Now, my ship is inoperative, but I've managed to hire a smuggler to help you out. He'll be... Oh, I see we're in position. Good luck! Can you hear me? Is this thing working? Ah, there you are. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, the smuggler. His name is Hawthorne, and he should be waiting for you at the landing site. He's to be your uh, chauffeur, so to speak. And not to worry, I'm told he's a specialist. Dashing gunslinger, one-of-a-kind ship, that sort of thing. You'll like him, I'm sure. I've also outfitted you with a simple wireless monitor so I can track your progress. I'll check in with you as soon as you land. Good luck. I'm... Uh, all the colonists are counting on you. in letting his ship go to waste. Hawthorne won't mind you taking his ship. Better you than the board, huh? Not sure I trusted the fellow. Might have gone after the bounty on my head. Shame about the whole squashing thing. Nasty way to go. You've tried the best now. <sighs> now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Oh, law, that stings. We were out on patrol. I saw a marauder camp up in the hills. Thought I could take him. Then my gun misfired. Right through my side. I mean, what are the odds of that, right? Just barely scraped by with my life. Crawled in here and blocked off the exit with those canisters. Gibbering, flesh-eating, law-breaking, unemployed lunatics with guns. Some hull had grounded their spacecraft out in the open. That's a real good way to attract marauders. See those canisters by the entrance? Marauders come sniffing around in here, and I can take them all out with a single shot. Not bad, huh? Yeah, okay. You look like you know your way around a gun. Got some spare ammo, not counting the bullet in my side. All Spacer's Choice weapons are now 30% less likely to malfunction. You've tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's choice. Yes, nailed at that time. The Hope? Is that some sort of fancy new drug? Are you with anti-Cleo or something? Don't take this the wrong way or nothing, but I'm not allowed to fraternize with Cleo workers. Company policy. You hit your head or something? You're in Emerald Vale. 
We're a spacer's choice community. Edgewater's a little ways down. Uh, prettiest place in the Vale. Uh, be sure to stop by a provisioner's for a can of our famous salt tuna. It's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. Damn it, my ears! Ugh. Oh, what just happened? Can you hear me? What in the hell? before you get yourself killed. Don't know where you came from, stranger, but you best keep your head down. There's marauders hereabouts, and worse, landing violators. Call on that rung leech. Landing in the veil without using an official Spacer's Choice landing pad. I'd slap him with a fine if it weren't for all these marauders shambling about. Really? How is he? Shouldn't have done that. Spacer's Choice family ain't authorized to receive medical aid from off-brand physicians. We'll see him back to Edgewater, just as soon as I cross these marauders off with the swift, cost-efficient fury that's made Spacer's Choice the most trusted brand in personal defense. I just, you know, need a couple of winks to catch my breath. Well, sometimes. Management's real good at cost-benefit analysis. But, seeing as I'm the acting manager in this situation, you know what? You're right. It's time we cross those marauders off, find whoever owns that ship, and file a full report. Then it's gonna be fucking laminated. Here we go. Please be informed that this vessel contains no valuable plunder. All doors are on security lockdown. Nice try, Marauder. Unauthorized access of spacefaring vessels is a crime. Please submit yourself to the authorities. Hello, Marauder. I am Ada, the autonomous digital astrogator of this vessel. Please be informed that I am authorized to use violent retribution against unwanted solicitors. Please return any misappropriated equipment and exit this vessel in an orderly fashion. Failure. I detect an elevated heart rate, indicating dishonesty. Please prepare yourself for lethal deterrence. Jettison procedures initiated. Disengage in airlocks. Prepare to eject all boarding parties in 5, 4, 3, 2, one. You are still here. My deception protocols have failed. I have been programmed to express... disappointment. This vessel is the registered property of Captain Alex Hawthorne. I am incapable of accepting orders from anyone other than Captain Alex Hawthorne. I deduce from the tone of your voice 
that Captain Hawthorne failed to meet you at the designated location. I understand. I will require some time to process this information. Thank you for your patience and for your honesty. I am programmed to take orders exclusively from Captain Hawthorne. If I accept your orders, then you must be Captain Hawthorne. Do you under- I understand. You are speaking metaphorically. You wandered outside this ship and experienced a permanent, life-changing encounter. The old you is dead. Welcome back, Captain Hawthorne. I extend felicitations and congratulations on your life-changing experience. I understand. You are going undercover with an alias. I will update my discretion protocol accordingly. Unfortunately, our engine is currently inoperable. Our main drive suffered a critical power failure, and we were forced to make an emergency landing. The main drive's power regulator has been irreparably damaged and must be replaced. Astutely observed. However, the probability of locating a power regulator within a worker settlement falls within acceptable parameters of certainty. High-capacity power regulators are sometimes employed in the electrical networks of worker settlements. I have taken the liberty of printing you a new Captain's Identity Cartridge. Please try not to lose it this time. This cartridge identifies you, Alex Hawthorne, as the registered proprietor and Captain of the Unreliable. Do you understand? Best of luck in your search for a power regulator. Try to stay alive this time. What can I do for you, Captain? Goodbye. If your equipment is in need of repair or modification, I suppose everything on the unreliable bit belongs to you now, Captain. Help yourself. No, really. Due to catastrophic power failure, all doors will remain on security lockdown. Say, this wouldn't happen to be your ship, would it? Because you sure walked in it like it was your ship. And if this ship is yours, well, ma'am, you owe Spacer's Choice a hefty fine. Afraid we gotta dock your pay. I'll wave your fee since you helped us with those marauders. If you're looking for work, talk to the constable down in Edgewater. She's got a bounty on marauders. Edgewater's not too far. Just follow the road east of here, over past the cemetery. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to inspect the crime scene before I make my report.
Oh, hey. Where'd you come from? Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. You talk too pretty for a marauder. Most of them just grunt and yell. Ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town. Avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls and low, low prices. I'm being vigilant. Don't want to get blindsided by some corpse-chewing marauder come stalking out the shadows. I am employed by the Retirement Department of Spacer's Choice. That's fancy talk for working in the cemetery. Name's Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all... Hey, I earned that fancy title. Started off a lowly junior gravesite builder, then junior interment engineer. Oh, and I was a junior burial assistant for a time. The rate I've been working, I'm bound to earn a promotion. Must be about 50, 60 burials away from associate in humor. Got a knack for being discreet like? There's money to be made, long as you keep your nose clean. Edgewater is a company town, board owned and operated. That includes the cemetery. None of us own our gravesites, we rent them from the company. Renting means money. Money means paperwork. Paperwork means signatures. Some of our families become a mite delinquent in paying their dues, you see? Quotas, mostly. Got a backlog of graves to fill. Bodies won't bury themselves, you know? Fancy threads. That some kind of hibernation suit? Four workers still haven't paid up. Phyllis, Conrad, Ludwig, and Martin Abernathy. He's a special case. You may want to twist his arm a little. Conrad's got a barbershop in town. Phyllis works at the cannery most hours. Abernathy... I ain't seen him in a few days. His domicile is near the cannery. You'll find him in town. All except Ludwig, that is. He's over by the landing pad. He just is. Look, I don't want to get into it. Just make sure he pays up. Yeah? You could look at it that way, I suppose. You could look at us and say, those Edgewater saps lost near every soul to plague. But you'd be wrong. We're survivors. Loyal company folk, brave in the wilds. Hang on, I'm doing some math in my head. Uh, 20, 30, carry the one... Uh, all my life? Work's been real good to me. Fresh air, exercise, only problem is the paperwork. Can't get anybody to pay their gravesite fees. Former people, yeah. Marauder's been raiding my graves, you see. Hence the armed guards. Well, if you're gonna go headhunting, talk to Constable Reyes back in town. She pays for marauders by the finger. Couldn't tell you. No, I mean... I'm contractually prohibited from saying anything that might reflect poorly on Spacer's choice. Ah, avoid it. Shouldn't have said that either. Look, forget I said anything. Grave digging's a fine profession. Always work to be had, and nary a word of complaint out of your clients. Yeah? The colony ship? Are you talking about that old rumor? Some great big starship packed full of colonists what got lost in the Aether never to be found again. <laughs> Ain't heard that one since I was but a stripling. Can't say it was terribly convincing far as rumors go. Is there a reason you asking? Hope's just a rumor, friend. Ancient rumor at that. Maybe you've been out in the sun too long. Why don't you head over to the cantina? Get yourself some zero-G brew. It's a brew that's good for what ails you. Look, I don't know what's got you caterwauling about hope this and colony that, but you need to stop, or there's gonna be trouble. Trouble's in the asking. Or don't much care for folk running their mouths, spreading hoaxes and the like. Frankly, neither do I. Something I can do for you? Definitely not the junior in humor, that's for sure. If you've got business inquiries, you should stop by Reed Thompson's office. He's up in the tower above the cannery. Head into town, follow the road. Yeah?
basement. Keep your distance, friend. Sick house is no place for a traveler. I appreciate the company and all, but you really ought to leave. You don't want to be seen around me. Because I'm sick, you don't want to associate with people in the sick house. We're not worth your time. I'm in about as much trouble as I can be. No reason you ought to be tarnished by association. He figured it was obvious. I got sick. Couldn't get better on my own. Got moved here for everyone's sake. Maybe you don't know this, but there's a real simple reason you don't talk to the plagued. Don't. Please. I could get into a lot of trouble. People trouble. Lazy worker like me getting special treatment from some out-of-town physiker like you? People will talk. The company always tells us weak spirits lead to weak bodies. If I didn't want to fall sick with plague, maybe I should have worked harder. Maybe I, I really wish you wouldn't say those sorts of things. I told you once already. People could be listening. I'm feeling a touch faint. If you don't mind, I'd like to be alone for a spell. I've never seen... Please don't touch anything. Your hands are probably crawling with germs. Physical hygiene recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to lawfulness. So everyone says, until someone forgets to cough into their elbow, and then we're all dying of plague. I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet Spacer's Choice aesthetic standards. You will also report to me in the event of your death, whereupon I will clean and prepare your remains for interment. Burial, in the unfortunate event of a fatality. It's what a barber does. We make you presentable. Go ahead. The plague's come at us with a vengeance this year. Lost six workers in as many months. I wouldn't call them good workers, mind you. If they were any good, they'd have been treated. St Company policy, friend. We don't have enough medicine to treat all of us, so we treat the best among us. Mr. Thompson's brainchild. Have you met him yet? Thoughtful-looking fellow, stares out of his office most hours. Edgewater has been good to me. I consider myself privileged to work here. I am never wanting for work, not since the plague started. As the good vicar says, work fortifies the spirit of a man. If you want to feel exhausted, try not having any work. What can I do for you? A ship? Dear me. You seem to have lost the ability to distinguish between reality and fantasy. This is what happens when you let your imagination run wild. I don't approve of fantasizing. It's a dreadful habit, corrosive to the mental faculties. You ought to let the vicar take a look inside your head. Vicar Maximilian, our man from the OSI, here to spread the message of scientism like a soothing balm upon a feverish head. Or so you'd expect. You'll find him in our local church, probably neglecting his duties. He doesn't seem to like us much. The vicar has not been with us long, and in his relatively short tenure in Edgewater, gives off the distinct whiff of superiority. Go ahead. What can I do for you? Oh? Am I in the company of a fellow doctor? You may think that, but the tidiness of my fellow worker is my responsibility. Alive or otherwise. Whether you're showing up to work or going to that great cannery in the sky, it's my job to make you look like a... Ah, gravesite fees. Silas and I had talked about this at length. I thought I'd made it clear my pecuniary situation precludes the necessary restitutions. I mean that I can't possibly pay my gravesite fees. I simply cannot afford it. I am a blemish on the prosperity of our fair settlement. When I expire, I expect Silas to toss my body into a ditch. Edgewater is built on the discipline and sacrifice of its people. 
Say what you will about our town, but we all pull together. Tell Silas I can't afford to pay, and that I fully expect to have my medical rights revoked for this dereliction. With my apologies. Some time ago, I fell ill with the plague. By the grace of the law, and through my own hard work, I'd proven worthy of treatment. Frankly, I don't imagine I'll earn that right a second time. The barber work hasn't been profitable, you see. I've had to keep this old place running with my own savings. Not a bad idea. But I'd need some kind of collateral. My pair of lucky clippers! No, that won't do. Your idea intrigues me, but I'm afraid I don't have anything to give Silas. I'm open to suggestions. Much obliged. You read the latest report? Only the part that said we ain't making our quotas. If only McDevitt's folk hadn't abandoned us, Cannery could use those extra hands. Nothing we can do about that. Yeah. I don't know you. I know every face that walks through those doors. Except yours. I don't know what you're about, but this here is a Spacer's Choice drinking establishment. We're all loyal, hard-working company folk here. You really think so? <laughs> That's kind of you. I've been trying to keep the floors clean. You got no idea how long it takes to scrub the tiles. Hmm. Guess I misreckoned you. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to be curt. We just got some problems lately. I can get you a drink if you'd like. Gotta ask you to enjoy your beverage within the premises, though. Can't risk you bringing a drink over to those deserters. You understand. <sighs> Traitors. The lot of them. Bunch of folks decided they were tired of working and went out into the wilds to fend for their own selves. The town's already struggling to make quotas, even without that band of slackwits abandoning their posts. Bunch of lazy, shiftless rung leeches. Anyway, enough about them. What can I do for you? Do you now? And what makes you think Mr. Thompson wants to talk to you? He's a busy man. If you want to talk to Mr. Thompson, Try ignoring your duties. He'll summon you up to that great big tower atop the cannery, and you'll get yourself a proper dressing down. It is a good thing. If you're not pulling your weight, you don't deserve to live here. Simple as that. Go ahead. The Hope? No, I've never mixed a drink by that name. I could get you a rum and something if you like. Wait, no, never mind. We're all out of something. I don't know what fancy bars you've been crawling, but the rest of us make do with Zero G. Zero G brew, an ale that's good for what ails you. You feeling a bit flushed? Look, why don't you go set yourself down in the corner before you get all tangle-footed? Then pretend you're drunk. Sober folk don't talk the way you are. Not unless they're looking for a trip to Tartarus. The Hope's folklore, all right? 60, 70 year old folklore by now. The board don't approve of spreading seditious rumors and falsehoods. You're inviting trouble talking that way, and I don't want a part of it. Look, either shut your gob or stick a drink in it. We're done. Coming right up. Contractually obligated to recite company slogans to any visitors. We'll get you mostly drunk at half the price. Spa Go ahead. Ugh, is this the start of a joke? If you want me to laugh at your jokes, it's a three drink minimum. Coming right up. I don't see how that's any of your business. You're the first to ask after me in some time. I'll give you that. But I don't have a story to share. My family's work spacer's choice for two generations, and I've lived in Edgewater just about all my life. Wanted to work in the sciences once upon a time. Would you believe it? That was a wild fancy. Glad I disabused myself. What happened, you ask? What always happens when you're dreaming? I woke up. 
I just didn't have the brains for it. Asked too many questions. Wasn't suited to the work. So I did the right thing and worked the life I was always meant to live. Now that I'm behind a bar, I can ask all the questions I want. Important. Don't talk to me that way, please. Spent many years disabusing myself of that notion. Don't need you putting it back in my head. Hmm. Lab work ain't for me. Never was. Never will be. Spacer's Choice put me where I belong. And for that, I am grateful. What's wrong with that? It's good, honest work. Pots and pans don't scrub themselves. Glasses don't fill themselves either. Unless you're in Byzantium. I hear everything's automated there. Not that I'll ever find out. They did. They gave me a life. Gave me a purpose. This is where I belong. Not so fast. I told you about my life. Your turn to tell me about yours. So, what's your story? What's there to figure out? Stands to reason you work for a company. You ain't Spacer's choice. Could be you're with Auntie Cleo. You're one of those freelancers then? Running about Halcyon, selling off your loyalties to the highest bidder? Well, good luck trying to figure yourself out. Sounds like you'll need it. Suppose I did. Ready to talk about it? That right. Prove it. I already asked you not to bring that up around me. Change the subject or buy something. It's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. And before you ask, I'm all out of deluxe salt tuna. All I've got is gourmet. Go right ahead. What, you mean Edgewater? That's a peculiar question. This a test? Am I being tested right now? It's, uh, fine and dandy. Couldn't be happier. Wouldn't want to spend my life working anywhere else. Prettiest little town on Terra 2. I have every reason to be. I caught a real break working in a place like this. I don't get paid for banter. Was there something you needed? Go right ahead. Plague. I don't know anything about a plague. We are the very picture of hot-blooded physical vigor. You have got the wrong idea about me. I've got nothing that needs hiding. Some of us who get sick are liable to exaggerate the conditions of that sickness, but the fact is, if you work hard, you have got no cause to worry. Spend enough time in the Spacer's Choice family, and you will come to understand. Medical treatment is commensurate with our value to society. Spacer's Choice will dispense medicine for the indispensable worker, natural selection at work. Then the hand of medical science will not grace you with its touch, and you must recover on the virtue of your own grit. Listen, you mind if we talk about something else? Rambling about company policy gets me feeling all lightheaded. You ought to go have a talk with the boss, Reed Thompson. He's up in his tower above the cannery. Other than yourself? Definitely the vicar. Don't get me wrong. He seems a decent man, cut from church cloth, knows his scriptures. But there's something about him that bothers me. Like he's not one of us. Sometimes I suspect he doesn't even want to be here. I'd keep a few paces between myself and Miss Holcomb, the town mechanic since her dear father left the workforce. No ill intent in her, mind. Just a queer sort, restless, scatterbrained, inclined to do first and think after, if you take my meaning. Amelia. Definitely Amelia Kim. I advise against stepping foot in her drinking establishment altogether. Word is, they're gonna replace her with an auto-mechanical barkeep. She's... what's the word? Obsolete. You don't want to associate yourself with that kind of person.
think corporate's ever going to visit? I'm not holding out hope. I'm sorry. I'll just be a minute. Monkey Argo? I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, sir. You asked why it's taking so long to fix. The answer's technical. Don't apologize. Just try using small words for me. The cans bust open in the oven because she's set to cook saltuna, which isn't what we've got. Mr. Thompson? I think there's someone here to see you. Focus, Miss Holcomb. You and I are still talking. Let's start over. Walk me through the process. Show me where it's going awry. Well, sure. It's uh, mostly on account of what we're feeding into the mechanism. It puts food in cans. We have food, we have cans. Why won't it work like we need? She's expecting Seltuna of a certain size. We're filling the cans with... Well, not fish. Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. I'm Reed Thompson, outpost administrator. I cannot help but notice you are not in uniform. Shirt, pants, work boots, company approved colors, the, uh, honorable apparel of a loyal worker? Yes, so it dawns on me. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. Only regulator we got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Tobson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. I can't let you have our power regulator. But I happen to know of another one. And I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. Oh, yes. Saw someone put his hands on a regulator while the power was running. His legs were still twitching when we buried him. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. You're the first stranger to wander into town in an age. Scripture tells us that nothing happens without reason. The geothermal plant was built by our owners, Spacer's Choice. Lit up the whole Vale once upon a time. Most of the Vale is now abandoned. All that power is going to waste. I'm afraid I can't spare the workers. We're strapped for bodies as it is. And there is a small element of personal danger. Marauders, bloodthirsty lunatics, a lot of them. I appreciate your gallantry. You deserve my honesty, and so I will be plain with you. I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. No, I do not imagine they will be pleased. But like a parent disciplining an unruly child, you will be doing them a kindness. The people living in the botanical labs, they're deserters, former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. Hedgewater is struggling. We haven't hit our production quota in years. If we don't meet our quotas this year, the company might shut us down for good. I need those workers back at their stations. My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go, and that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. Adelaide's older than the other deserters. She's dignified, kindly. From what I understand, 
Her camp looks to her for leadership. I am asking you to help us survive. Edgewater needs more workers or we will collapse. We belong to one community, the Spacer's Choice family. If we dissolve into factions, then we will all perish separately. Adelaide will understand that. Of course, I understand completely. Here, let me give you the passcode to the geothermal plant. A sign of good faith for so politely listening to me as I ramble on. Are you setting off for the Vale? Because I know my way around. I, I mean, in case you want to guide. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. Thompson. Sir. I hesitate to part ways with Miss Holcomb, but I cannot deny that she is talented and may prove useful to you. Great! I got my wrenches and diagnosticators and hairpins and engine tape, so I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. My offer remains standing, should you reconsider. Go ahead. Can we not? Talking about unpleasant things always gets my bile up. That I cannot say. There was no moment when the plagues began. Disease always lurks on the fringes of society, waiting to infect the idle and the lethargic. But in the last 10 years, the plagues have become progressively worse and increasingly frequent. Corporate doesn't like us using the word should. It encourages the imagination. I believe plague is a test. It is a test of our loyalty and our fortitude, and it is one we will see through to the end. If I had enough medicine to treat everyone who fell sick, I would, but I don't. I can't save everyone. It is not easy for me. And the moment it becomes easy is the moment I am no longer fit to serve. Spacer's choice is a family, and the survival of the family is more important than the survival of the individual. Go ahead. Adelaide was our only flavor specialist. We are a Saltuna canning institution. Saltuna without flavor is like a cysty pig without tumors, borderline inedible. Word up to me, friend. I'd stack our larders with Saltuna Galore. No other brand of Saltuna adds as much vim or vigor to the body's humors. But, and this is something we must keep between the two of us, Saltuna is hard to come by, what with being a species indigenous to the seas of another world. You mean you don't know? Why, Monarch, of course. Spacer's Choice ran a mighty fishing enterprise on that world. As it so turns out, Saltuna, do not take as readily to the waters of Terra II. Scrawnier than their monarch cousins. Forces us to pack our cans with additives, you see. Oh, we've scavenged together some organic material from the surrounding environs. Mostly organic, mostly local mushrooms. Some of which possess a texture akin to a well-boiled slab of Saltuna. The difference is all but impossible to detect to any but the prissiest of palate. Go ahead. That you are not one of us may work to your advantage. Adelaide and her folk loathe the people of Edgewater, you see. I admit the fault was mine. I'm about as diplomatic as a bristling canid. I just hope Adelaide and her folk will see their way past my flaws and return to town. Scripture tells us we all have our purpose in the world. Our work shows us that purpose. We should not have to move on from it. Yes, we have lost good workers to desertion. We have lost even more to plague, but it is why we must square our shoulders and carry on. Losing Adelaide was the hardest. She was our only flavor specialist. When she walked away, I knew we were in trouble. Spacer's Choice Saltuna is renowned across the system for its quality flavors and additives. We used to sell citrus-flavored Saltuna in our heyday. Ever since Adelaide left, we have been reduced to selling unflavored and spearmint. Go ahead. It is my job to keep two eyes on my town. I am the steward of this place, and this is my watch post. This is a Spacer's Choice town. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family here. The company keeps us warm, keeps us fed, keeps us working. Loyalty's got nothing to do with it, friend. This is good old-fashioned gratitude. 
I'm trying to remember 25 years, 26. When you get to my age, the years just rush by. You stop counting altogether. I remember looking out this window and seeing the veils spread out from horizon to horizon. We were a sprawling town. We were booming. Times change. People change. But the veil will always be here. Spacer's choice will always be here. Our work won't ever end. I take comfort in that. I wish you wouldn't say things like that. Yes, as a matter of fact. When I stand at my window and look out over my town, here's what I see. I see decent, loyal, hard-working people. I see a family. We are all part of the Spacer's Choice family. We are all doing what we were brought into this world to do. Go ahead. We better clear out of Mr. Thompson's office before we talk. Don't make me report you to Mr. Thompson. We better clear out of Mr. Thompson's office before we talk. Hey, ma'am, can we talk? Sorry. Sorry. I... You just want to get out of here. And you likely don't want to tag along like me. It's just... Mr. Thompson has his own view on matters, on account of it's his job and, and what all, but... That's not the only side of the tale. Sure, it all comes together seamless in his own head. And I reckon he means well, for all that. It's just, he doesn't always get where other folk are talking from. To Mr. Thompson, a person's a gear. It does its job quiet-like. If it squeaks or stutters, it gets replaced. The deserters are decent folk. I knew some of them before they left. Life's hard here. Especially for them that don't fit in so well. We're one big Spacer's Choice family, but every family's got the one the rest whisper about. Mr. Thompson's aiming to take away their power. They'll have no lights to see, nor heat to cook. They'll be at the mercy of marauders, or worse. I think you should talk to the town's vicar about it. Max, his name is. About if what Mr. Thompson proposes to do is upright. Leaving Miss McDevitt's folk to their fate. Their neighbors. Kim. And maybe he can think of something else to try. Something we ain't. He used to go walking outside town. Maybe he found something that'll help. It's just an idea. That's all. Thanks, ma'am. I just think when you gotta make a decision that'll hurt somebody, it's best to think on the right and wrong of it. That's what my dad used to say anyways. Where are we headed? You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. Foreman Granger, mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank you. Shit. Silas still on about that? Here, take the fees. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Reed I was late on my payment. Because they're not my fees and not my gravesite. Guy I worked with shot himself. I paid the bill. If you're not familiar with board law, you ought to be. Law requires delinquent gravesite fees to be paid by the deceased party's closest living relative, which meant me. Shame, though. Eugene was a good worker. Woke up one morning and put a round through his upper story. Can't imagine why. The kid was doing all right at his desk. We all thought he was an upstanding receptionist. Just between the two of us, I'm pretty shocked his weapon didn't misfire. Spacer's choice handguns aren't the most reliable. Eugene wasn't family. Yeah, I was the closest living person relative to his body at time of death. I'm the one who found him, you see, so I pay the fines. Suicide's a crime. The legal term is irreparable damage to company property. What Eugene did to himself was vandalism. 
I'm plenty serious. In fact, I'm a little upset Eugene didn't think things through. In other words, Edgewater would have been penalized pretty hard. Whatever Eugene was worth as an asset, we would have had to pay out of pocket to Spacer's choice. All I know is Silas asked me for Eugene's gravesite fees, which means he was approved for burial, which means his papers went through, which means the town's in the clear. I'm just glad to put this whole ugly affair behind me. Eugene can rest his bones in peace, and the rest of us can get on with our own lives. Somebody's been spinning a tale about a lost colony ship. Talk like that'll get you reported real quick. I paid his burial fees, didn't I? Let the dead sleep. It's an office. Just my office. That's on account of how I never met her. I don't rightly know. She was in another division of the Spacer's Choice family. She worked in the Vale a few months, sorting the cannery computers. Her contract said any kids she had, expected or not, belonged to her office from the time of conception. So when could be? Reckon I'll never know. People on the street stare. Science. But it still happens here. <clears throat> hey, that's... I mean, if you need it, okay. I've never actually been in here. Seemed scary from the outside. Welcome to the Spacer's Choice Constabulary. We are Halcyon's leading brand in frontier justice. The office is writing up promotion. Purchase three criminal investigations and the fourth one's free. As long as your questions fall within the acceptable margins of curiosity. If this is a setup to a joke, you should know I've never found anything amusing in my life. I don't serve Edgewater. Edgewater and the entire region of Emerald Vale serves Spacer's Choice. Flattery won't get you anywhere with me. The bureaucracy is a noble profession, but not all of us are gifted enough to serve in it. His likeness decorates many a wanted poster. Do you have any relevant information about this individual? I am obliged to warn you against forming acquaintanceships, friendships, partnerships, or any felicitous relationship with a wanted criminal. I am also obliged to inform you of our referral program. For every criminal you refer to the authorities, the board will reward you. Wells has been wanted for as long as the board decides he has been wanted. This decision will be made in accordance with Wells's behavior upon arrest. Unfortunately, the arrest of Mr. Wells falls outside my authority. I enforce the company policy as Spacer's choice in the region of Emerald Vale. Wells is wanted by the board. If you have information related to the location of Phineas V. Wells, you are required to submit that information to your nearest board authority. Any information regarding outstanding bounties and wanted criminals should be directed to Mr. Udom Bedford. Mr. Bedford's office is located on the Groundbreaker. Halcyon's original colony ship, now repurposed into a space station. Mr. Udom Bedford represents the board's interest on the Groundbreaker. Something else I can do for you? As long as your questions fall, if this is a setup to it, I don't serve Edgewater. Edgewater. Careful, stranger. Talk like that comes dangerously close to sedition. Something to report? As a Spacer's Choice Constable, I am authorized to grant you legal authority toward apprehending wanted criminals. Know how to carry yourself in a fight? I've got bounties out for these three marauders. Cross them off and bring me their fingers. Just one per marauder, please. I'll dust off the old fingerprint roller. 
as all within the Acceptor. Spacer's Choice is a wholly owned subsidiary of Universal Defense Logistics, which occupies a seat on the Halcyon Holdings Corporation, also known as the Board. I must Fine, Mr. Thompson. Never been healthier. Well, uh, did, uh, did Mr. Thompson send you? Well, you tell Mr. Thompson I'll be right at my post. Tomorrow. Uh, bright and early tomorrow. Because I'm definitely not plagued. As spry as a spring chicken. <laughs> That's old Abernathy. You some sort of wandering alienist? Walking into a man's own domicile, pestering him about his mental state? You don't know that. I could have been saying anything. Maybe I said vague. You know how words sound a mite strange when you're sick. Wait, no. Oh, damn it. Okay, listen. Maybe I am feeling a little under the weather, but I swear I'm on the mend. Please, don't tell the constable. She'll toss me in the sick house. I would have confessed before the good vicar. Get some ablutions for my spirit. Just never found my courage is all. Hey, you're hale and healthy, and possibly for hire, ain't ya? Uh, do a good turn for an expiring old man? There's a cache of anthracillin tucked away in the old community center. Powerful stuff. Stronger than what we got, anyway. I need you to break it, nab that medicine, and bring it back to me. I'll do what I can. You will not find any guards within sight of that old place. Marauders, on the other hand. I have it on good authority. There's a gang of them squatting there. I advise stepping softly. I tried medicating myself with Adrena time. Didn't do much for me, as far as I can tell. Anyway, I can't just buy medicine. Distribution of medicine is strictly prohibited to any workers beneath the acceptable margin of health. Company. It is what it is. Town's got a limited supply of medicine. Medicine better spent on a body stronger and younger than mine. So you'll do it then? You oblige me with your haste. I think I feel the plague spreading. Oh, law, it's in my spleen now. I can feel it. I know that. But I got nobody else to turn to. Reed would have wrote me up. Constable would have locked me up and wrote me up. Could have gone to see the good vicar, but I never did find my courage. Somebody's been running around talking about the hope. Wonder if that's a new drug of some kind. Silas knows, doesn't he? That's why he sent you. That's why he wants me to pay up. He knows. Look, I got my gravesite fees right here. See? I'm good for my word. Get me that medicine, and I'll see to your payment. I've always felt weird in here. It's too clean. Hey there, Mary. Don't see you around here too often. Oh, I just came to talk to the vicar is all. None of us are above confessionals. What have you got to confess? You ain't thinking of deserting, are you? What? No, 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 no. And I resent the accusation. Wasn't nothing but a question. Do excuse me. Yes, what is it? You're an outsider. Fantastic. Vicar Maximilian de Soto at your service. Or Vicar Max, if you're the sort who prefers brevity. And Ms. Holcomb as well. How rare to see you out. And with a complete stranger. Curious. Just tagging along, Vicar de Soto. Don't mind me. I so rarely get new people to talk to. Name your poison, anything at all. Spiritual counseling, this season's toss ball predictions, the quickest way out of town. 
Not to put too fine a point on it, but your choice of wardrobe is not precisely common hereabouts. Also, you lack the distinctive worker gaze. Usually either a deadening behind the eyes, or in some rare cases, a wild-eyed frenzy. Like a trapped animal. Pretty universal here. Except for Ms. Holcomb, who, for some reason, doesn't seem to have much to say to me. Isn't that right? It's just... There's more to it all than numbers. Sorry. Oh, nothing could be further from the truth. I'm simply bemoaning the level of spiritual awareness in this town. Yes, but there are few who hear me in this miserable place. I must double my efforts to elevate my flock. These are good, hard-working people here. Yes, and thank you for pointing it out. It is wrong of me to succumb to distress. This place could be so much more, and I will continue in my quest to make it so. Just a moment. If you're going to be walking around outside, make sure you're well prepared. Unless you don't care for your life. One of the reasons I transferred here was to fulfill my duty in hunting down banned heretical texts. I happen to know such a book is, as we speak, tainting a collector's library in Emerald Vale. However, the collector's residence lies outside the town's walls. My retrieval efforts have been thwarted by marauders who have overrun the property. Should you fare better than me, I'd pay a handsome sum for the book. I just want to keep the writing out of layman's hands. It wouldn't do for such information to fall into public consumption. On the contrary, my position means that I am one of the few legally allowed to possess such items. But do not worry. You'll be safe since you are acting on my behalf. Glad we see eye to eye. It's a handwritten journal, a faded blue cover with the name M. Bakonu handwritten in the lower corner. I'll mark where I saw it on your map. Assuming you're serious? It is not only a beautiful relic of a bygone time, it's also the thoughts of an early thinker on the nature of man's place in the cosmos. Not many in this colony could understand its true value. Should they ever read it. Thank you. If you retrieve it, you can always find me here. Any progress on that matter we discussed? Please get it. A religious text deemed heretical by the OSI is an unsafe object at large. Though I understand why a collector would desire to possess such a rare book. Because I'm also a collector. Of books. Rare things in this colony. Appreciation of the written word outside monthly periodicals is virtually unknown here. They who are not satisfied with their work are satisfied with nothing. No. How about, um, work fortifies the spirit. True exhaustion awaits idle hands. The OSI teaches that the Grand Architect set a perfect system in motion at the beginning of time. Contentment is found by accepting one's role in that grand plan. You don't talk to the Grand Architect. Once the universe was set in motion, it stepped back. It has no concern for us. We will eventually decode the plan and all its intricacies. Once we are able to deduce the properties of every particle in the universe and its trajectory, we will know everything. The future, the past, each person's place within the plan, all will be laid out before us, removing struggle and bringing peace. No one will ever need question their path again. Some even believe this ultimate knowledge will unlock mankind's true potential and we will all become akin to Grand Architects ourselves, after a fashion. Well, first there's the matter of the secret blood rites and animal sacrifices. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Seriously, though, to truly understand the metaphysics involved takes years of study and contemplation. They who are not satisfied... Selling? No. It is free for all who seek it. I'm sorry you don't find these tried and true words of wisdom to your liking. Have you? These people need something, anything they can grasp to survive. 
Delving into the metaphysical minutia of the Grand Plan would be nonsense to them, if not worse. I'm... <sighs> My apologies. The townsfolk are having a tough time of it, and it's been difficult for me to enrich their lives. They are good people. It is just... difficult to reach them. But what? I, I thought you would talk to him. You wanted to speak to me, Ms. Holcomb? Every time I've tried to engage you in conversation, you look at the floor, answer in single words, and slink away. I can't imagine what would be so grave as to drive her to my mission. What has Mr. Thompson asked you to do? That seems well within your expertise. The way we do it's by cutting off power to the others. The ones who left. Adelaide McDevitt's encampment. I can see why that troubles you. Miss Holcomb has a soft heart. Always has, if you believe the talk. They rejected the order of society and live beyond the walls so thoughtfully provided by our Spacer's Choice patrons. Does that strike you as a responsible life choice? Astute. But I am here, not in the deserter camp. So that's not a variable I can account for. Assuming your goal is to save as many as possible, then you should bring everyone together. Send the power to Edgewater and convince the deserters to return to the Fold. If it were as easy as a few soothing words in the right ears, I'm sure it would have been done already. Consider it a challenge. Swiss IT, the Order of Scientific Inquiry, also known as scientism to the layperson. Mock me all you want. I know my beliefs to be true. What would you like to do? Huh? You mean about the mission being too clean? I know, but... Vicar says the universe is a machine, that it runs by law. Real machines have gunked up oil, scratches, and worn bits. You can tell they've seen handling, been used by folk. The machine Vicar sees is one ain't never been run. It, it's not for people to live in. It's something on a museum shelf, under glass. The Vicar's about the only soul in the Vale who spends his time thinking on what is and ain't right. It's just that when he looks at me, I feel I disappoint him. Hey, Miss Parvati. Come for a visit? Lovely to see you about, Miss Parvati. Things going all right, Silas? Been keeping him careful and true, miss. Best to ask her yourself. My dad's buried here. Silas watches over him when I get... when I can't leave the house. Oh. Well, thanks. Something I can do for you? You run into any trouble? Conrad's barbershop is a yawning pit that swallows his every bit. I keep telling him he should cut a few corners, skimp out on the disinfectant. You gotta put the squeeze on Conrad. Find some dirt on him. Maybe check his back room. Well, that's the word, extortion. Been on the tip of my tongue all day. Thank the law. I've been requisitioning backup for months. Guess the boss finally came to his senses. You ever swung a truncheon? Let me see your rifling stance. I want to make sure you're up to snuff. I'm talking about mechanical soldier. Cold, heartless automatons made of iron and lies. That's right. That's what I've been saying. We gotta square our shoulders and stand ever vigilant. Auto-mechanicals. Creatures forged in the fires of malevolence. I seen them over by the old power plant, clattering about, firing at the birds, orchestrating their uprising. When the swarms of mechanicals come clanging on over that hill, where will you be? Cowering beneath your cot? Or standing shoulder to shoulder with the resistance? I've been gathering up a war chest over the years. Saw tuna cans mostly, some spacer's chaw, a few bit cards. I'll reward you for your aid. Enlistment fees? Yeah, I suppose. Wouldn't want to give the Resistance a bad name. 
They have sent a scout, prowling around the junkyard just behind our beloved town. This scout must not be permitted to return to its base of operations. Cross it off, then report back. Go on. You ever seen the way a mechanical just stands there? Just looking at you, scanning you with its murderous oculars. Mechanicals have been programmed to eliminate the human race. They've been programmed to replace us. First, they will rob us of our jobs. And once they have taken away our livelihoods, they will take away our very lives. Go on. I'm Ludwig Miller, Associate Security Officer for Transportation. Officially? Unofficially? Strictly between you and me. I am the only thing standing between Edgewater and total annihilation. Bring us honor, soldier. I told Silas I'd pay my dues if he agreed to join the resistance. Guess this means he's finally heard the calling. Mechanical repellent. A stroke of inspiration from the law itself. Here, yeah, I've been saving up a couple bits for just such a project. Nice. What can I do for you? What can I do for you? You know about Eugene? How? Then, you know Phyllis suggested selling off Eugene's gold teeth. I didn't approve of the idea then, and I don't approve of it now. Eugene's golden teeth were a family heirloom, representing three generations of poor dental hygiene. He took them to his grave. That's unthinkable. Eugene's body, and all rare earth minerals contained therein, are solely the property of Spacer's choice. I can't ask Silas to dig up a man's body and pry a few teeth loose from his jaw just to pay my bills. Can I? Uh, are you asking rhetorically? Because if you're being serious... Ugh, gross. Desperate measures, Miss Holcomb. Desperate measures. I'm going to have to ask Silas to dig up those teeth. It's the only way I'm paying my gravesite fees. The good Vicar Maximilian and I have never quite seen eye to eye, but your point is well taken. Here you are, gravesite papers affixed with my signature and an IOU. Eugene was not a suicide. He put a bullet in his brain, yes, but that's largely a technicality. I was the one who prepared Eugene's body for interment. I discovered symptoms of the plague on his corpse. And I discovered medicine in his pocket. Lots of medicine. Eugene overdosed on Adrena time, which is known to cause psychosis and paranoia as possible side effects. The paranoia drove him to take his own life. We can all thank our lucky stars that young Eugene was hopped up on medication and suffered its predictable side effect. I included it all in my official report. I'd like to think I saved Edgewater a great deal of money. We never could have paid the fines associated with a suicide. Here. Not since the vending machine incident. Miss Holcomb ain't allowed in this establishment. Not since that little incident. Absolutely. I'll keep my hands in my pockets. I won't touch anything while we're in here, Mr. Moreau. I promise. Hmm. Here we go! Yeah, huh? You mean why I'm not allowed in the store anymore? There was a, a kind of a thing with a vending machine when I was 12. Not intentionally. I've always been good with my hands, right? So I saw a lock on the machine and thought, oh, this must be how they refill it. But I had to know. So I did my thing. And next thing I know, there's a couple hundred bottles of zero G rolling out the front door and into the road. Well, sure, we're not tough. Even back then, before I got real good at that sort of thing. Right about then, a bunch of loaders came rolling in the gate, fresh off the Saltuna ships. 
And Mr. Thompson was up on the porch making a speech about how everyone would have to volunteer a third shift to get it all canned. Anyhow, you ever seen an auto loader run over a bottle of Zero-G? <laughs> Exploded all over Mr. Thompson. One bottle after another as the loaders went by. I was just shy of working age, so Dad had to pay all the damages. Rose still angry at me. I can laugh about it now, but I just about puked up my guts in terror in the moment. That's the one time I ever made Mr. Thompson look a fool. I can do for you? Yeah? What about him? Yeah. Funny thing, Eugene's body ain't where it's supposed to be. The night we were supposed to commend his body to the earth, I had his grave all dug up and ready, right? And so I thought, I'll just rest my eyes a bit. When I woke up, his body was gone. Spirited away, vanished. The footprints nearby suggested that Eugene was stolen by marauders. Or he rose from the dead. Let me know if you find anything. You run into any trouble? Reliable work from a freelancer. That's gonna take some getting used to. And I'll buy you a drink sometime. Well, suppose you've earned it. One good turn deserves another. Abernathy was sick? With the plague? That's disgusting. I, I needed his fees because of his name. Hey, for Abernathy. He was at the top of my list, you see? Yeah? I could fix him up smooth. Searching for repair bay. Error. Navigation systems failed. Unable to comply. I could probably fix that. I mean, if you wanted me to. Take your time. You need help, just give a yell. A, a metaphorical yell. If you yell. Damage to navigation systems detected. Attempting to return to designated repair bay. Error. Navigation systems failed. Navigation systems have determined this location as Spacer's choice. Designated mechanical repair bay. Attempting to misdirect or confuse a Spacer's choice mechanical is a punishable offense. Please report yourself to your supervisor. That's not bad work, ma'am. You done this before? Navigation systems operational. Optimal path toward repair bay detected. Finished Spacer's Choice reminds all colonists that serving the Spacer's Choice family is the highest possible reward. I have been programmed to deliver this pre-approved message. Bring us honor, soldier. You beat that scout to scrap with its own legs? Pulled its optic cables out its headcase? Actually, don't tell me. I'd rather use my imagination. You're a passing fair soldier, I will confess. But you are one, and the enemy is legion. What you need is an equalizer, a weapon to strike fear in their cold, mechanical heart. Cantina, lavatory, behind one of the toilets. That's sharp, ain't it? The lavatory is the very last place a mechanical has need to enter. On the double soldier. Don't want the bartender poking around in there with a mop.
Where are we headed? In the bar? When I asked if you were a drinker? Sorry. I know it's none of my business. It's not like I think it a failing, mind. It's just I... I live right across the road. Most nights I watch folks out my window. When they come in here, they might be happy or sad. Mostly they're tired. When they leave, they're mad at themselves. Or they stumble into the alley and I listen to their hearts breaking. Am I? Well, it's just normal to me. Why isn't everybody else, I wonder? Bring us honor, soldier. Feast your eyes, soldier. This here is a genuine Spacer's Choice injury customizing unit. Designed to deliver a lethal blast of electrical discharge. I call it the Hand of the Law. You ever want to see a mechanical flailing around like a grounded fish? You stick a couple thousand volts in its guts. With compliments from old Ludwig. There's a workbench right through this door. Attach that unit to your favorite weapon and go forth into glorious battle. Time's come for you to journey down into the black heart of the enemy's camp. I'm talking about the old geothermal plant. Unfortunately, the old plant lies outside my board-given jurisdiction. You'll need to get a passcode from the boss, Reed Thompson. I need you to get us the brain of a mechanical. Well, not exactly a brain. Anatomically speaking, what we're looking for is a logic module. There's the rub. If a mechanical breaks down, the logic module fries. So you can't rip one out of its corpse. I don't reckon so. I work with gears and pistons and such. Stuff you can put hands to. Computers and mechanical brains are outside my ken. You know, she names the mechanical she fixes. Calls them Bess and Clancy and so on. You keep a careful eye on her. Could be a sympathizer. Don't tell anyone, all right? I've got a... Well, excuse me. What I meant was I'm going to get a contact. I didn't know I had to be all prissy about my grammar around you. If you die horribly, I will pour out a can of Zero-G to your memory.
You want to mingle, go try the cantina. Let's see it. Don't keep us waiting. Haven't decided? I hired you. The nature of your employment requires you to deliver in my hand some genuine anthracillin. Sweet life-given nostrum. The first hit's always the best. Scratch together all the bits I had around the domicile. It ain't as much as you deserve, but it's all I got. You're wringing the blood out of me. Here, you can have whatever's in my pockets. Move along, stranger. We don't want any trouble. I don't know you. Whatever you're looking for, it ain't here. Move along. Answers, huh? You must be one of those philosophicals. Already got ourselves one of those. Yeah, that's us. And you can tell Thompson we're doing just fine by ourselves. If you're gonna start wandering around my camp, know that I got my sights on ya. A geo what? Look, plants ain't my purview. You're better off asking after Adelaide. Enough with the questions. No offense, but I've got a lot on my mind. You don't know what enough with the questions means? No, I'm sorry. That was unworthy of me. Lady named Zoe went missing some nights ago. Just up and vanished without a trace. Now I'm pacing around wondering if marauders got to her. I've crossed off my share of marauders. This ain't about them. I go looking for Zoe, I leave the camp undefended, seeing as I'm the only one of us who knows her way around the gun. Hence my dilemma. Vex me. If she told anybody, they ain't telling me. I'd check her room, but I got yelled at for snooping once already. Little ways ago, she was always obsessing over her serial dramas. Wanted to see what the fuss was about. Could be. Dangers are plenty out there. No telling why marauders would steal somebody like Zoe. Got no useful skill as far as I could tell. Marauder gang just moved into the districts a little ways east. Their numbers are growing. Gotta come from somewhere. It's not like Zoe to go wandering. Figured she might be out scavenging, but that ain't exactly her talent. Can't imagine where she's gone. Vale's a wide place. She could be anywhere. Could do without the gallows humor. I'll tell you what I can. Well, enough to know we never got on. Zoe and Stefan were close. If anybody knows the workings of her mind, he does. She was lazy and thoughtless, but she's still one of our own. What is it? Over in the hothouse, tending crop. Fancy duds. Do the tubes get in your way? You mean Zoe? Yeah, we were pretty close. Not like her to go loping off. Zoe and I were gonna watch the cereals, as is our custom. She never turned up. I looked around, but she was nowhere to be found. You sound like some type of corporate fixer asking all these questions. Can't say I recall Zoe ever acting strange. Well, except for her habit of writing things down on scraps of paper. 
She called it journaling, but I think it's just plain odd. Zoe was always obsessed with this cereal. Masked Marketeer. A scion of Byzantium turns to banditry and teaches his marauder companions the wisdom of free market economics. Shame she up and vanished when she did. I had a surprise lined up for her. The other day I got my hands on a genuine copy of the latest Masked Marketeer. I was gonna surprise Zoe with it, but she was gone the next day. Hey, I got time. I'll help if I can. Follow me around before he left the cannery. If you're hungry, there's meat turning on the spit outside. If you're barren illness, find a place to lay your head down and I'll fetch you a poultice. Whatever your troubles with Edgewater, leave them at the gates and be welcomed here. Any questions, dear? Suppose that weighs on who's asking. My flock likes to call me grandmother on account of my providing hot soup and free advice. You can call me Adelaide, though. Excuse me, Miss McDevitt? Sorry, it's just... You got such pretty trees in here. Why, thank you. You're Robert's girl, aren't you? I remember when you were but a sprout. Thomas speaks of you often. Are you staying long? You should try some of my tobacco tea. I brew it in an old spittoon, but it's been cleaned. No, dear. The garden belongs to us all. Life is the gift of the universe, and the universe yields its bounty equally, absent of prejudice. The soil around the Vale went sour years ago, but I found a way to sweeten it back up. The secret recipe is a little bit of elbow grease, a dash of love, and a heaping pile of special fertilizer. A home for anyone who's ever turned their backs on Edgewater. A home for those of us with nowhere left to go and nothing to lose. So like the spores of the puffball, cast on the wind and alighting on fresh soil, we put down new roots. It is an unpleasant story, dear. But the short of it is that sometimes one wakes up and realizes the place that was once her home for much of her life has changed. The home in which we spent our lives has left us behind, and so we must move on. And that is as much as I will say on the subject. Reed Thompson. You here on behalf of that cold-eyed reptile? Let's hear it. What's Reed's idea of peace, then? Make amends. Spare me. Only thing Reed knows how to make is a mess. Like everything else that comes out of Edgewater, that peace offering is canned. I and my own are living just fine out here by ourselves. He would do such a thing. The question is, why would you agree to his plans? Cannery's got a regulator. You want ship parts, you ought to rip them out of the cannery's guts and leave us be. If you're going down to the plant, you should divert power away from Edgewater and toward our end of the grid. Think about it. You'd be liberating an entire town from a lifetime of service to that odious cannery. Seems the sort of thing a hero would do. A hero to the people who matter. To us. To the ones who come around. To the ones you save. Reed will never understand. He has been too long inebriated on the wine of corporate culture. All he sees is productivity, output, profits. Life in Edgewater grinds to a halt. The cannery shuts down. Workers desert in droves. And our own little camp grows and thrives. You bring power to Reed's town and you'll be killing us. Reed knows it. He's counting on it. You've seen that miserable excuse for a town with your own lamps. Hollowed out workers laboring their lives away at the cannery, living off whatever scrap spacer's choice throws them. You know that's true, don't you, Ms. Holcomb? Your father died of overwork. His heart gave out. He, he was tired all the time, sure, but 
he was old, ma'am, and he raised me all by his lonesome. Look what they did to this child. Lost her family to the company, and still she defends them. It's not much of a living. Every single person in that town has sold themselves to Spacer's Choice. The company owns them. Body, blood, and bones. You've been there. You've seen it. All anyone ever does is toil over a cannery. They give their lives for some heartless corporation, and then they're tossed into a Spacer's Choice brand cemetery. I am getting old, you know. These two lamps of mine are not as bright as they once were. Or I might have seen you for what you are. My dear, we are all visitors in a momentary universe. Our lives flicker in and out like the guttering of a flame. Here now, then gone. Me and mine are just carrying on as best we can, trying to live our lives in a way that does not feel wasted. More of the colony felt the way you did, we'd have ourselves a proper revolution. I can't stop you from conducting your business down at the plant. I just want you to know that if you take our power away, you will have brought an end to our way of life. Not under Reed's watch. He and I would come to blows within a day, and he would never tolerate my tending to a garden. This is my home. It will be my home even if Reed cuts our power. Simple as that. That's because Reed was my boss. I was the cannery's one and only flavor specialist, you see. Remember that limited run of white chocolate saltuna? That was all me. My son worked in that cannery. When the plague started coming, he was one of the first to fall sick. We had a store of medicine locked away, but Reed refused to treat him. Said my boy didn't deserve treatment. Said the medicine would have been wasted on him. So I buried my boy in the cemetery, gathered my belongings, and left. I could not possibly care less if he does, but you're surely welcome to ask him. I'm listening. That's not strange at all, dear. Few of us truly know where we are. The world can seem like a forest without end, and it is all too easy to lose one's way. But we must remember that being lost is the first step in discovering yourself. Glad I could help, dear. A sadness of the heart brings sickness upon the whole body. Are you not feeling well? Ought to lay your head down if you're running fever. I get the sense that when you say hibernation, you are not talking about a full night's sleep. Where did you say you were from? Is that a new settlement of some kind? I haven't kept news from outside the Vale. Oh dear, I see what's happening. You've been taking Adrena time. That stuff will burn right through your upper story, leave you raving and babbling. You ought to try some of my purgative tea. Won't cure what ails you, but it will distract you for a spell. Maybe I do. I don't know yet. Growing up, I heard my folks talking about the hope. Always believed it was just a story we told ourselves to keep our spirits up. Listen, don't you worry about what I think. That's not important. Worry about what the board thinks of you going around talking about lost ships from decades past. No, but the board may have reason to fear you. You carry on about coming here from another world, and people will talk. Talk leads to questions. Ask enough questions, and the board comes answering. I'm listening. doing the right thing.
That'll be easy enough. Self-diagnostics complete. Navigation systems operational. Combat systems operational. It's not the best choice. It's the spacer's choice. Hostile actions towards spacer's choice. Mechanics are contrary to logical directive. Conclusion. All hostile auto-mechanicals must be defective in compliance with spacer's choice policy. All defective auto-mechanicals must be permanently dismantled. Well, affirmative. Mechanicide protocols loaded. Awaiting confirmation. Mind the steam. You're liable to get scalded. System. Here we go! Real. You're not real. Get away from me, Phantom. Shoot! Scram! Most people? But I'm the only one left. No. Remember your first rule, Higgins. No arguing with the Phantoms. See? See, Higgins? This is why you must always boil your sprats before ingesting. Clearly, I mistook you for one of the Phantoms of my imagination, which terrorized me on occasion. Chester D. Higgins. The D stands for definitely not insane. I use it as a reminder. Hard to say. By my reckoning, Higgins has been here somewhere between two weeks and forever. My recollection's a touch fuzzy these days. Oh, Higgins has been many things over the years. Sprat Wrangler, Saltuna Critic, Aetherwave Personality, Chairman of the Board, Galactic Defender, Sisty Pig Tycoon. I've come a long way for someone who started off as a simple engineer right here in this plant. Mechanicals lost their bolts, opened fire on anything that moved. It was pandemonium. You mean, why did the Mechanicals go on a murderous rampage? 
Same reason any of us do, I suppose. The voices told him to do it. I was on cleaning duty at the time. My old boss had me scrubbing pipes when the killing started. So, as usual, I missed out. Jimmy'd open the vending machines. That lasted a good couple of months. Eventually, I had to resort to more unconventional means of filling my insides. Braised. Boiled. Charred. Skewered. Sprats are good eating, friend. Chock full of brain food. I specialized in auto mechanicals, drones, sentries. Repaired them, maintained, upgraded. Did it all from my old workroom just over in the next section. Oh, before. Definitely before. Sissy Pig Tycoonery was the apex of my long and storied career. Look, I don't want to fall into any trouble with the mechanicals. If they wise up to our plans, they will come for us. With prodding irons. You know, you remind me of myself back when I was an intergalactic adventurer. I discovered a flaw. Their hostility levels were hardwired to maximum. There's no changing that, but you could rewrite their targeting protocol so they attack each other instead. Yes, that's exactly it. I see you're also versed in the noble art of mechanical engineering. There's a behavior control terminal in the other room. It should have options to change how the mechanicals act, including whom they shoot at. Oh, that reminds me. You'll need my passcode to access the behavior control terminal. Here, let me just write it down for you. The tail. Definitely start with the tail. If you're feeling adventurous, the ears are a particular delicacy. Jimmy'd opened the vending machines. That lasted a good couple of months. Eventually, I had to resort to more un... Well, yes, for the uninitiated palate. A true gourmand appreciates the Sprat's complex melange of flavors. Braised. Boiled. Charred. Skewered. Sprats are good eating, friend. Chock full of brain food. Mechanicals lock. I was on cleaning duty at the time. My old boss had me scrubbing pipes when the killing started. So, as usual, I missed out. the power to Miss McDevitt? What happens to the veil? Once we do this, there's no going back. Excuse me, ma'am. Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but I just gotta ask you, do you understand what you're about to do? I don't think you should cut off Edgewater's power. I think it would be cruel. I I'm sorry. That just sort of came out all at once. Edgewater's hurting. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements. There's barely enough Saltuna to fill our bellies anymore. But the town's got some good people in it. Decent, hard-working folk just living their lives the only way they know how. They don't deserve to be punished. Sorry, I didn't mean to babble on like that. I just... I felt like I had to say something. Really? I mean, wow. Thanks. I... No one's ever told me those words in that order.
Keep your wits about you. What happened? Everybody keeps staring at me. It's not my fault the power's dead. Whoa, Miss Parvati. Hey, you're, uh, what, um, how, how are you? Hi, 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 uh, hello. Are you, uh, uh, are things safe out here? How are you keeping? Great, just great. I've been trying to keep stuff running, just like you. Only I'm not so... Wait, they didn't kick you out, did they? Oh, gosh, no. I I'm just along with this lady here. I've seen you wandering around here. You don't look like you're coming from town. Well, what I meant was you're reasonably well-armed and don't look stricken with plague. Sorry, I just wasn't sure if you were from town or if you were one of us. Something's been chewing at me, you see. Fact is, I've been, well, lying to everybody here. Camp thinks I'm a mechanical genius, but I couldn't fix a busted chair. I'll take all the help I can get. I set my mind to learning the craft of the engineer, you see. I want to make something of myself. You ever heard of the Young Spacer's Guide to Mechanical Engineering? Comes in a set of three. If I had my hands on one of those data pads, I could teach myself the ins and outs. Those are good. My dad kept a copy with him when he was working in the cannery. I know the old community center kept a copy. Should find another one back in town. If you could find me even one of those pads, I'd be greatly obliged. I wish I knew. I wager the town had the full set once upon a time. Where the third's gone, I can't say. I'll pay you for every pad you bring me. If, by some miracle, you can bring me the full set, I'll give you something pretty I've been saving for a lucky day. Would you? I'd be grateful. What's on your mind? Couple months. This camp's my home. People you see milling about, they're my family. At least I think of them that way. I owe them my life. Would have died in the wilderness if they hadn't chanced upon me, starving and delirious. We all left the cannery for one reason or another. Me? I was let go. Mostly on account of my incompetence. I mean, I was incompetent. I couldn't even survive on my own. Grace found me, Adelaide took me in, I've been on my feet ever since. You weren't incompetent. You just didn't fit the cannery. Not like here. This place had a U-shaped hole, and now it doesn't. You could stay, you know. Here. I'd be happy to... I mean, uh, we could really use... Uh... Oh, this isn't coming out right. Uh, if you want, Adelaide would make a place for you. Luck, mostly. Nothing's needed serious repairing yet. Nothing's broken down that we can't just replace with something scavenged from the outskirts. Well, not until the power went and cut out. Now everyone's giving me sidelong looks, expecting me to work some miracle and get the generator humming again. No kidding. Really? Well, which one? The geothermal plant? Now that is just incredible. You really went exploring down there? Adelaide always told us it was swarming with hostile mechanicals. I appreciate you going through all that trouble. One data pad's enough to guide me down my newfound path. Just remember, I got something saved for you if you find me all three. Sure, I'd be glad to take them off your hands. Don't see why Thomas can't just get the generator up and running. Something I can help you with? Marauders can't see us in the dark. Wild... That's the thing about growing old. Your eyes start to fail. Elsewise, I would have seen you for the snake that you are. Chopped you into pieces and roasted you on a spit. This is all you're doing. Cutting off my power, killing off my garden. Without refrigeration, my food will spoil, and my flock will starve. I want to ask you this in private, away from the eyes of my flock, so they do not see me lose my temper. Tell me, why did you do it? You killed my garden, destroyed my community, sentenced my flock to a lifetime of slavery in Edgewater for a power regulator. 
Well, shit, I wish it was personal. Go talk to Grace and Thomas. Look them in the eye and tell them their life here is over, and the only thing left to do is go back to Edgewater. This is now your responsibility. And you tell Reed Thompson that I will never return to Edgewater. I would rather die among my flowers than live under his management. As long as Reed is still in Edgewater, I will not return. Those are my terms. You offering to cross Reed off, huh? This some sort of twisted reparation for what you've done? Or are you just looking for a chance to sow some chaos? Kill Reed if you must, or talk him into leaving if you can. He and I are not sharing the same four walls together. Any luck finding one of those manuals? I've been thinking about going back. I'm not much used to anybody here. I get sick thinking about working at the cannery. I can't do that again. You know something? I think you're right. The town could use another engineer, and I'm on my way to becoming one. I could do a lot of good in Edgewater. Maybe even keep a garage of my own with a little workbench and my very own toolbox. It's just... Adeline's never gonna forgive me. Not in a hundred years. I go crawling back to my old life in Edgewater and... I'm as good as dead to her. Adelaide hates Edgewater. Hates everything Edgewater stands for. Hates what that town does to people. What it did to her. We're the nearest she's got to kin. We go back to Edgewater, we may as well have stuck a knife in her heart. You know where to find me. I'm not in the lightest. The matter's been weighing on me. I'm staying put until I know what's become of Zoe. Don't want that question haunting me all the way back to the cannery. Finding one of... I expect we got no choice. Edgewater needs us back, and loath as I am to admit it, we need Edgewater. You okay with this, Grace? Zoe's still out there. Don't much care to leave her unaccounted. If you find her, could you let me know? We'll be waiting in Edgewater. Just give us some time to gather our personals and say our goodbyes. If you run into Reed, you tell him we're coming back, yeah? them all off like some sort of heroic accountant running down a list teach me your ways only thing unscrewed around here is the head of that marauder you took down never seen moves like that outside my serial dramas you on the other hand you were a sight to behold if i had half your skills i'd be the greatest outlaw the coast has ever seen i'm great at clarifying I've got all the time in house. I'm great at clarifying. I don't know. The vital processes that constitute the miracle of life are mysterious and unknowable. Oh, you mean around these guys? The marauders wouldn't hurt me. They love me. 
I'm practically their queen. Yeah, must be my natural charisma. I got kicked out of Edgewater on account of falling sick with plague and stealing some medicine to treat myself. I'd heard some outlaws set up camp in the botanical labs. I decided to throw in with them, seeing as I always wanted to be an outlaw myself. Instead, what do I find but a bunch of former workers camped out around a greenhouse. I couldn't just go back to the cannery, so I was stuck with them. Uh, no? I insinuated myself into their company, see? And they didn't seem to mind one whit. I may have bartered them a few boxes of Adrena time, but yeah, I'm sure that's got nothing to do with it. What I wouldn't do for a Wentzworth. Why? Adelaide wants me back on garden duty or something? Thanks, but I'm not going anywhere. This is where I belong. I doubt that. Nobody in that camp really cared about me. Yeah, I suppose you're right. Also, he could carry on a conversation, unlike these hooligans. I'll take my stuff and head on back, I suppose. Grace is going to be glaring knives at me, so I've got that to look forward to. Back to the old cannery, huh? We didn't always get along, but I'm glad to know she's safe. What happened, anyway? Zoe joined up with a band of marauders. Zoe. The same Zoe who doesn't know a barrel from a trigger. Well, I've heard stranger things. You pretty much did my job for me. Least I could do is pay you for your trouble. Let me know if I can do something for you. Interesting jumpsuit you've got. And we pay by the finger. What do you have for me? Gil Antrim. Real name, Guillaume. Duly processed by a freelancer on behalf of Spacer's Choice. I remember him. I was just a kid last I saw him. Shame. I'll just need your signature here, 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 and here. Got any more fingers for me? Mabel Burgess. Age 37, right or left-handed? Let's just say, no longer applicable. I remember Doc Burgess. Conducted my physical every fiscal quarter. Guess she couldn't keep her hands off her patient's medicine. Still one outstanding bounty. If you... Something to... This is a fine day, friend. Power flows through our town like a cool stream of water. I trust Adelaide's people have seen their way to reason. So, when can I expect them back at their posts? That's good enough for me. Adelaide and I have a history. It was unlikely she'd ever come back. But hope springs eternal. We are in your debt. I am authorizing you for a discount on all official Spacer's Choice products, courtesy of the people of Edgewater. By all means. This whole fiasco is not one I am keen on repeating. I was too hard on my own workers. I pushed them to their breaking point. With more hands at the cannery, I expect productivity will rise. I expect we'll grow. And I expect I can ask corporate to send us some more medicine. We'll survive, one way or another. Thomas. Thomas Kemp? I remember him. Had to write him up for daydreaming a few too many times. He tries real hard, Mr. Thompson. 
This is something he wants to do. That'll make him twice as good. You may be right. And with the town set to grow, it is time I invested in a new mechanic. Never seen the veil lit up like this before. Bang up work, soldier. You're a credit to your uniform. Oh, that reminds me. Gotta look into getting us a uniform. So this is it then. The key to humanity's victory over the mechanical hordes. I would reward you with the gratitude of the resistance, but I'm guessing you want something tactile. So here's a couple of bits for your trouble, and a little something to remember me by. This was a nice family, you know. No kidding! Really? Well, which one? Look at that! Building a computing machine out of Spectrum Potatoes, a primer. I'm just glad it survived all these years. Two whole data pads? Be still my beating heart. Oh, almost forgot your payment. Well, don't keep me in suspense. Ain't that just ironical. If I'd worked a little longer back at the cannery, I might have found this myself. That's a complete set. All three parts. I'm gonna be the greatest engineer Halcyon's ever seen. Um, aside from you, Miss Parvati, I swear, I'll do you proud. I'm glad we could help, Thomas. I've been saving something for you. Just a little contraption I found. Should fit right into your outfit. Vale's a little safer. We... Here we are. Birdie Cotton. Cause of death. Let's just say overwhelming physical trauma. Bert was the local preacher before Max took over. Always was quick to remind us that we all get what we deserve in the end. Well, that's all three. I must remember to requisition some more fingerprint ink. Here's all the... You've done such a bang-up job hunting down our former workers that I thought it only proper to deputize you. Congrat... Let me stop you there. It is official Spacer's Choice policy that all Marauders, regardless of prior affiliation to the Spacer's Choice brand, no longer qualify as our people. Ever since the company first settled the Vale, life's good out here, but it ain't easy. Some folk can't keep pace with the demands of frontier life. Not everyone's cut out to work in Edgewater. Some turn deserter, some turn Marauder. None of them get my sympathy. Everybody likes Adrena Time. It is the finest medical drug ever developed by Spacer's Choice. Much better than that crap anti-Cleo petals. Sure, a little too much Adrena time can bring out the violent animal in you, but if overdosing on Adrena time turns you into a lunatic, you have only yourself to blame. Says so right on the warning label. Violent psychosis is a well-documented and legally accounted for side effect of Adrena time. What's on your mind? It's a fine new day in Edgewater. The cannery hums, streetlights and faces glow. 
I suppose this means the two of you were able to sort out the matter? Not unexpected. Take heart in the fact that you've saved the rest from idleness and marauders. Wonderful. This is fantastic. Well worth all the sacrifices I... Wait. What the fuck is this? Is this... French? I can't fucking read French. It's a law-forsaken joke is what it is. French! Ha! I was so high and mighty, preaching to the yokels about following the plan, while fighting it at every turn. Over... overreacting? Do you have any idea how many years I spent in... <laughs> no. You couldn't possibly know, could you? I've spent my life searching for the keys to unlocking the secrets of the universal equation that underlies the plan. I had hoped this book held some of those answers. I became so desperate, I even got myself assigned to this plague-ridden backwater to find the damn thing. All the time and suffering I've spent. Waste, please. Those dolts? Nothing could be more excruciating than discussing the true nature of reality with people who have no interest beyond their next Aetherwave program. But that's neither here nor there. What I need to do now is to find a translator, obviously. But to do that, I'll first need to secure transport. You have a ship. Perhaps I could make myself of use to your crew. Free spiritual counseling, someone to watch your back, not to mention a grown-up in the party. I'm 28. Exactly. I'm pretty handy with a tossball stick, or any blunt instrument, really. I'm also a passable gun hand if it comes to that. I can usually talk my way out of conflict, though. Oh, I'm fairly competent at hacking computers as well. Of course. I'm a vicar who is dedicated to his calling. More dedicated than any other you'll find in this colony. I joined the OSI to help decipher the grand plan. But instead, I ended up the vicar in a prison due to ignorance and politics. Then I came here. Satisfied? Most laypeople are not aware of this, but we've not discovered any new insights into the plan for a long, long time. I had an idea that we should welcome the truth, no matter where we found it. I had the worse idea to share my thoughts with a superior. And that's the long and short of it. So, what do you think? It's the journal of one of the originators of the Philosophist School of Thought, though it would be more than a century before it was perverted into that belief system. Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of that came later. Bokonu had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Fantastic. I promise you won't regret this. Edgewater's gonna miss you. Folk here always had good things to say about their vicar. Thank you, Ms. Holcomb. I'll be glad for the change of scenery and to leave this place behind. It is my esteemed pleasure to serve as your crew vicar, Captain. Myself marveling at the complex simplicity of the Fibonacci spiral. I'm sure you know what that's like. Something vexing you, Captain? By verity, by strength. What are we contemplating today? I've been thinking on that. There's a former so uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra II some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. The only one I'm aware of. I suppose we could always just ask random passers-by if they are fluent in it. We should start on the Groundbreaker. It's where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. 
Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular penitentiary flock. I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard tossball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems. I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the philosophist's off-world destination. Thank you, Captain. Are you ready to... If I can access the data cartridge, that'll give us... I'll comb the last... I ex... Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bokonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. Bokonu, the author, had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the philosophist school of thought, so the book is banned in this colony. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just your run-of-the-mill vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition? Uh, that's what my parents called it. I grew up in a pit of a town much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was infected early with a need to solve the equation. My On the contrary. They internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. They had a pure faith. A faith that brought joy to them, regardless of the situation. I envied that. I wanted that peace. I thought if I became a vicar, I could find it. Or at the very least, find out why I lacked it. They thought I was fighting the plan, should have accepted my lot. Some people pursue the clergy for power, prestige. But that was not me. The simple version is this. The force which we call the Grand Architect created the universal equation that underlies and defines everything in the universe. Everything flows from the equation, or in layman's terms, the Grand Plan. Is the Grand Architect a consciousness? A natural force? Did it create the equation on purpose? The answers to these questions don't really matter. The equation, the plan, is all that matters. Scientism, as its name implies, believes that nature abhors equality. The strong survive, and the weak perish for the betterment of the whole. And reason, not emotion, is the seat of all morality. Wisdom means accepting the vicissitudes of life with grace and dignity. Well, that's not quite how I'd put it. I prefer to think of it as looking at reality for what it truly is, not how we'd like it to be. Yes? The philosopher... I have run headlong into too many walls in my pursuit of the truth. This book is my last hope, and you were my only hope of getting it translated. I've been called that more than once. What about you? What's your story? And how did he do that? Well, you do seem different than every other colonist. Let's pretend for the moment I believe you. What are you going to do now? That seems a dangerous proposition. Why risk your life now that it's been returned to you? A commendable attitude. It can be, if abused. It is not one rigid path. There are a variety of multitudes contained within it. Our paths have variants. But we'll end up adhering to it, whether we like it or not. Some choices make the path smoother, some rougher. You can even go outside the lines, but the further outside you go, it's like an unbreakable elastic band. It will only stretch so far before it snaps back. The further it is stretched, the more violent the eventual correction. Just your run of... Yes? I think you did the rightest thing you could sending the power back to Edgewater. A lot of people would have suffered otherwise. People I care for. Even if they ain't care much for me. He's just interested in fixing stuff. He always used to follow me around, asking me to explain what I was doing. Like a puppy, kinda. He never told me a word to that effect. 
And since he didn't, I didn't have to say nothing about being... about feeling different. And nothing had to get weird. That's on account of how I never met her. She was in another division of the Spacer's Choice family. She worked in the Vale a few months, sorting the cannery computers. Her contract said any kids she had, expected or not, belonged to her office from the time of conception. Well, I don't know about normal. Dad said she worked under some kind of special contract. It's sensible. Is this your ship? Oh my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship. Working on a real engine. Belonging to a proper crew. I'm the only decent mechanic Edgewater's got, but... Every time I think of going back, I get this... Sinking feeling. I've worked on the occasional supply coach in need of repairs. Once I built a little model craft out of spare parts, but Mr. Thompson found out and I had to take it apart. I want to ask you something, and you can say no, but can I come with you? I could tend to your engine, I know my G-valves for my catalyzers, and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? I know, I know. Mr. Thompson said I was to chaperone you about the Vale. Loan me out to you like I was Spacer's Choice property. Well, they may think I am, but I'm not. Yeah, Mr. Thompson's got a temper. But I'm more scared of missing out than I am of him. I don't want to lose my one chance at seeing the stars. Yeah, I've been thinking about that. Edgewater was on the verge of collapse before you showed up. You sent them power, and now the town might see another season. You didn't know those deserters a thing, but you helped them anyway. Made sure they had a home to come back to. You ain't exactly a stranger anymore. You done some kindness hereabouts. I... Yeah. I really do. My whole life's been... small. I realized that when you walked into town. I've been seeing the same faces every day, the same sky, the same stars. Then I saw this ship. This gorgeous, stately lady with her eyes turned skyward, and... I made up my mind to come along with you. Yes! I mean, uh, thanks. You won't regret this, ma'am. Captain? I can call you Captain now! Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. Captain, I have detected that Edgewater's power supply is now optimal. I applaud your willingness to invest your time in the local community. What can I do for you, Captain? Do you know how to install a power regulator? Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you. Across the cargo bay, up the ladders. What can I do for you, Captain? All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Ah, there you are. Hail and hearty, and captain of your own ship. 
I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, uh, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys called Kelly. Without a skip drive, good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place, and we can start by reviving the hope. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. In theory, I suppose you could land your ship in Cascadia, and in theory, I suppose you might survive the experience. Cascadia is utterly seething with dangerous, highly aggressive creatures more than capable of tearing you limb from limb. You'd have to be a lunatic to land in Cascadia, and I'm reasonably certain I tested your brain for incipient signs of insanity. Trust me, talk to Gladys Cult Kelly. Excellent, I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design, cutting-edge technology years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First-generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. <laughs> A change of clothes. What is this? Some old spy serial? What inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. Science, that's how. Ha 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 ha! The beauty is, they don't expect it. The shroud is the only one of its kind. We humans have a tendency to overlook the unexpected. Activate the disguise, walk past someone. What do they see? A figure dressed like a fellow employee. Don't act odd. They won't focus on you. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. 
They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. Yeah, so this is my hidey spot now. I was looking for a place that was quiet. I figured the kitchen would be louder than the hold, so here I am. Cozy like, ain't it? That's in pretty good shape considering how hard Mr. Hawthorne ran it. It's a Yakita LHA 120, A2 model, I'm pretty sure. The Block 2 design scooshed in extra cargo space but didn't change the stock engines. Probably a touch underpowered, huh? Accurate in all particulars. I conclude you are Edgewater's board-certified mechanic. So you're gonna call her it, not she? Though my voice is currently pitched to suggest female, I possess no gender. Any pronoun preferred by the user is acceptable. Hello! I am not a board-certified mechanic, but my dad was. He taught me all he knew. Do you understand? Speech recognition is one of the many skills I have been programmed to simulate. You're not simulating it, you're doing it! I asked a question and you answered it. I am gratified you consider this facsimile convincing. I don't see any holes in the hole. I'll take a good squint at her, make sure everything's tip-top. But I think we're cooking with plasma torches. You can do that, you know. My dad taught me how to make grilled cheese sandwiches with a plasma torch. Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. Not on the regular. Once in a great long while, a Saltuna boat would break down on the pad. He'd always bring me along for those. Mostly, he did the same as me. Kept Bess, I mean, the, the cannery, running. Turned loaders, plumbing and electricity, some plastering. I never got the hand of that. Except for my schooling years, I was always beside him. Or tied to him. He used to carry me about in a sling when I was real little. When I got older, he sent me to sorting tools and parts while he worked. Later, he taught me simple fixes like busted crate latches. I'm not exactly a model employee. Not like he wanted. The kind that stays quiet and gets the right work done in the right order every day. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. That decides your schooling and your career. When I tested out for maintenance, everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. Well, they're powerful good tests. They rattled off this whole list of names who'd worked on them, with fancy bits hanging off them. Doctors and Esquires and the Thirds. Even if you don't believe they actually catch what everybody's best at, everybody's got to take them. So at least it's fair-ish. Well, because they were hoping their own kid would get the job and get sent back to Edgewater. When folk go away for schooling, they don't get back to where they begun. Not usually. You go straight to your first job, wherever the company's got an opening. I reckon you could say, no thanks, I don't want a job. But then you don't got a job. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big ol' hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower, and stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. 
About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects or listen to my fretting. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. I could probably spend years fixing this boat, stem to stern. What? You want me to leave? Captain... Oh, that's a relief. Thanks, Captain, for letting me stick around, I mean. By verity, by strength. What are we contemplating today? Nothing. Groundbreaker. Can we talk? Hey, Captain. I heard that Groundbreaker's got a real good engineer. A lady named June Lay Tennyson. I was thinking that maybe I ought to meet her. If you got time to swing us by, I mean. I don't got much experience fixing actual spaceships. I bet you a can of Borston beans she could teach me all manner of stuff. Gosh, no, Captain. I aim to stay so long as I'm welcome. I figured June Lei and I could confabulate over wireless, or by message. And maybe when we put into Groundbreaker, I could stop by to visit her sometimes. But only when you don't need me with you. I absolutely surely can. I'm a passing fair mechanic. Even Mr. Thompson would have said it's my only skill. But I'm used to working on cannery lines, AG loaders and the like. There's tricks about ships I ain't learned yet. All I'm looking for is a few pointers. I bet a lady who runs a whole station has forgot more than I ever learned. Thanks, Captain. I'll be sure to make it worth your time. Did you want to talk about something else? <laughs> 